this is the time to really shine and, and step into what you've been being called to do all this time. The world needs you more than ever to shine your light, mm. right? Because there's so much fear and oh, sadness and, and, and rightfully so going around that right now, everyone stepping into the, their light is really going to be, um, I believe, the, honestly, the healing that the world needs. Hello and welcome to the Wellness Trinity Podcast, where we interview top holistic experts and bring you natural solutions for modern day wellness. Let's get started with your host, Dr. Jacqueline. Welcome. Thank you for joining the Wellness Trinity Podcast. I'm Dr. Jacqueline from thewellnesstrinity.com, where we provide natural solutions for modern day wellness. Today, we are going to discuss with Adelina Tansioko three simple strategies to connect to your higher self during this pandemic to find peace of mind and direction. Just a little disclaimer before we get started, what we discuss in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. What you do with the information is to be used at your discretion as the recommendations are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This episode was sponsored by Cellcore Biosciences. Created, creating supplements that work is what they do, and restoring hope and health is who they are. Cellcore is absolutely incredible. I've been using them in the last year with my clients, and the things that come out of people are incredible. Let's just put it at that. So the point is, we don't want these bugs and parasites in our body. Um, they don't make us feel good. They make us lash out and do all kinds of crazy things. So if you're a practitioner are, in, are really curious about how to take your practice up um, with your clients to a whole nother level, I would highly suggest looking at the Cellcore products and protocol and, and seeing what that's all about. And it, to the general public, if you want to know how to take your health to a whole nother level, then visit the wellnesstraining.com slash Cellcore Detox. So Adelina is, she was my um, life coach for a few years. And I can't tell you how much breakthrough I had as a result of working with this woman. She's from surrenderhealing.com and she has a free gift that she is going to be offering today. So if you stay to the end of the show, I hope that you listen to the whole thing and don't just skip there. But for the, those of you guys on Facebook Live right now, um, stay to the end and she will be offering a free gift and she'll tell you more about that later. So Adelina Tansioko, MSW, is trained as a therapist, restorative justice practitioner, and certified coach and consultant. However, she most identifies with being a vessel of healing. She has intuitive gifts that have been passed down in her family for generations. She has spent more than half of her life learning from her ancestors and, uh, and God about how to connect with those who have passed, those who are alive and in pain, and most importantly, our own inner knowing. As the founder of Surrendered Healing, she specializes in ser serving women of color who question their inherent deserving and helps them trust their higher selves to create the abundant lives they truly deserve. Adelina, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really honored to be here. Well, I mean, I we've, we did do another podcast before. I hope you guys can catch that one. Um, as well. And the reason why I'm having you back today is because we are definitely going through some interesting times right now with the coronavirus, with being quarantined. I mean, the emotions are just all over the place, mm. right? <laughs> some of them are, um, you know, some people seem like they're just having a good time trying to make the best of uh, being at home. And some of them are freaked out and they don't even know what to do. So why don't we start with this? Like, wh what do you think about what's going on with this coronavirus? Yeah, I mean, it's been such a whirlwind. In some ways, I still feel like it's surreal what's happening. And I love how you're saying, yeah, some people are handling it. You know, everyone's handling it in different ways. And I also just want to stress that what we see on social media is not always what's really happening in folks' lives, right? Um, yes, and, and we could be all of that. We can be staying on top of our healthy diet. We can be exercising in Zoom classes and doing yoga. We can be meditating and we can be freaking out all at the same time, right? And so just wanting to put that like out there because I think sometimes um, it's easy to look at other people's social media posts or, you know, stories if you're on IG or whatever folks are writing about and think, oh man, other people are handling this so well, how come I'm not? And I think it's important to just know that people don't always share everything that's happening. And I think I would be more 
concerned for anyone if I was talking to somebody who didn't have a little bit of a freak out. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have even just a little bit of a freak out, I would be more concerned simply because it's human to have this moment of like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Right. And if you're not, if there's not any of that in you, to me, that tells me that you're, um, this is a little bit more of my like, uh, you know, social work background and therapy background that you've disassociated and you're like disconnected. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, or that this has become so normalized that you have been in a state of trauma for a while outside, even outside of, um, shelter in place. So a time of chaos is your normal time. And that's also something to be concerned and, and notice. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'll also say it's very normal to have a moment or two or several throughout the day, or especially when this first started of like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Or mm -hmm. as this continues, what am I going to do now? I've been, you know, I'm having cabin fever. I want to see people. I, I'm scared looking at the numbers, all of the different things, all the different emotions that can come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what, I'm sure that you ease some people's emotions, even just by saying that right now. Um, I'm happy that you mentioned that because it's okay. It, it's not to judge anyone for having any type of crazy emotions, whether they're up or down or one moment they're feeling really good because they're like, yes, I don't have to work. And then the other minute they're like, wait a second, I don't know what's going to happen with my work. You mm -hmm. know, so it's just, it's a very normal situation. And then, yeah, if they don't have a reaction, uh, maybe some people don't even realize what's going on is, um, is almost my concern too, or what could be going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's good to be informed, um, but not to live in a state of fear as much as possible. Uh, and then also we're going to talk about tips today of like how we can deal with uh, all these different emotions and, and what's going on in the world. Yes. Yeah. So Adelina, what brought you to spiritual life coaching? Ah, oh, yeah. You know, I, I, um, I go over this question all the time because people ask me like, what the heck, what's spirit, your spiritual life coach? <laughs> Where did you come from? Where did that happen? Um, but you know, long story short, I was working as a social worker, um, in Oakland for a good amount of years. And I loved the work that I was doing there. I was working with, um, youth and their families. And, um, I don't know, it was just, it was really rewarding. and just given my role, I was only able to serve people up to a certain point, and then they would no longer qualify to receive my services, right? Um, and I was also serving folks to a place of like survival, and I really wanted to support people into thriving. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I left the field, um, created my own business, Surrender Healing, where I can um, meet people where they are and then take them as far as they want to go. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, and I, I love, and I'm so honored to have served you in the past. And, you know, even just being on this podcast, it's like, ugh, I remember when this was just like a, a vision, you know, a thought that you had and you're like, I don't even know where I would begin. And here you are, you know, years into this and it's flourishing, you know, and I am so honored and grateful to be able to witness folks dreams just come forth, you know? And so I, utilize my background, like, you know, you said it in my bio, but in my background in um, social work, having been trained as a therapist and mental health practitioner, also as a sort of justice practitioner and certified coach, but I also bring in an intuitive gift that's been passed down to my family. And so it just felt like the, the next best step for me was to listen in and um, move from my higher self. And I, I do want to pause though, to say that I was hella scared. <laughs> it wasn't like a, oh yeah I'm gonna do you know there was years of me internally you know fighting this calling that I had and it honestly wasn't until I had a spiritual life coach that I was able to breathe in that sense of calm and move past my fears into my true calling oh my gosh Adelina I you know in the midst of something very serious I love that we can have a a, a a bomb of laughter like that you know what I mean <laughs> it's like, because and I'm laughing with you because I know exactly what you mean like <laughs> like you mentioned about the podcast and I almost brought it almost brought me to tears actually just now just mm. thinking about that because uh, for those of you guys that don't know I mean Adelina I, I don't put this lightly she really was a huge influence on why I'm where I'm at today I mean she really helped me capture my vision be okay with it because I was also hella scared <laughs> <laughs> 
and also like very uncertain, very like, I, I didn't even realize that I could have dreams like this that come to pass. I mean, I've always was a visionary. I always worked very hard and had goals, but I don't know. In certain, some goals sometimes just seem some, so, like just unattainable almost like leaving your job to be able to pursue an entrepreneurial path, living in the Bay area in California, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, being able to be a doctor of natural medicine and help people get to the root of their issues. Like, being able to live in a beautiful home and be married. And I mean, for, for some people, well, including myself, a lot of this was very, seemed very, very, very distant for me. And so I, mm -hmm. I can't tell you like that time that I worked with Adelina, it was about maybe nine months. I feel like it really sped up that process for me because it allowed me to internalize like, yes, these are real dreams I have. These are real things from God. Mm -hmm. And I, I should be okay with that. You know, <laughs> I should be okay with that. And the more I worked with her, the more I, I swear it's just year, even years later, I'm still peeling the layers like, oh my God, this is happening now. Oh my God, this is happening now. <laughs> I just told her recently something happened. It's been a couple of years since I worked with her. So um, I just want to just publicly honor you in that. And, mm -hmm. and thank you to everyone that's listening. You know, I give this woman so much credit for, for where I'm at. And even this podcast, like you said, I was freaked out. I was so freaked out. So, you know, I know you work with a lot of people in their dreams and it, it is a real thing that we get scared. Mm -hmm. And this time I think is a lot of um, people might have a pause where they can actually think about their dreams. And so um, they might be in that same place where they're like, well, I don't even know if that's possible. And especially, I don't even know where life is going right now. <laughs> right. No, for sure. Well, thank you for that. I just want to say, um, thank you for that. And, you know, the process is, it's always, I'm just, I'm inviting folks in to do the work, um, but you're the one, you, you did all the work. So I want to give that right back to you and right back to God. You know, it's a co-manifestation between you and your higher being. Um, and I had the honor of witnessing it, you know, but going back to what you're saying about right now, actually, I think right now is there's so much fear happening, yes. And there's so many things going on to be concerned about, yes. And I'm not not trying to take any of that away. In fact, because of that fact, I think this is the time more than ever to step into our higher self. We don't have time to play small, right? Yeah. We don't have time to play small. This is the time to really shine and, and step into what you've been being called to do all this time. The world needs you more than ever to shine your light, mm. right? Because there's so much fear and oh, sadness and, and, and rightfully so going around that right now, everyone stepping into the, their light is really going to be, um, I believe, that honestly, the healing that the world needs is us stepping in. Yes, Adelina. Oh my God. I got chills when you said that. And I always know when I get this like certain type of chill throughout my body, it's like, God is like, there's something about this. <laughs> there's something to take note of this. And I will tell you, I had a vision of a couple weeks ago or maybe about a month ago. And it was like this bright sun was just rising and everyone was looking at it and in awe, like we were just in awe of God's glory of what is happening. And this is during the season that this light is, it's not just the sun is coming outside. I feel like the light is coming out of people. And that was the word I was getting. And as you're saying that, it just kind of aligned with what I was, the vision that I was getting and how uh, people are going to be drawn to the light in other people and, and want that as well too. And the more we continue to walk in our authentic self and, and be that person that we're called to be, the more we just naturally shine that light, you know, like when I've done jobs and I've done things that are not really in line with what my real purpose and calling is in life, I was it probably not shining that light as much because I'm struggling here. I have inner conflict, <laughs> um, but it's just so much easier to be free and walk in that light when you wake up every day and you're like, I'm called to do this. Like I know that I know, and I have peace and I love what I do and I'm, I'm encouraging others and, and you know, that light just shines. So I see it in you and I see it in a lot of other people that, that really are walking in that authenticity. Yeah, no, it reminds me of that quote, your, your vision that you were just sharing. And I mean, what a powerful vision that you had, right? And it reminds me of that quote from Rumi, um, which is the wound is where the light enters you. Right, mm. like, right now the world is wounded right? We have this big, open, gaping wound 
happening. And some would say, and I, and I myself included, that that wound has been there, but there's just been a band-aid ripped off, right? So there's this gaping wound, and this is, there's this gaping openness for the light to come in, for the light to shine through, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and where is the light? The light is in each of us. You know, there's a song, I can't remember the name of it. I feel terrible because I always like to give credit. But there's a song um, where uh, the singer is asking God, you know, why is world hunger happening? Why are people, you know, dying um, of murders? Why is, like, why are these horrible things happening, basically? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Where are you, God? Right? And then God responds with, I'm right here. And then the singer is like, okay, well, what, what are you, what are you doing to fix all of these world problems? Right? Why aren't you fixing all these world problems? And God says, I am, I created you. Mm-hmm. Right? I created you to fix that, you know? And so it's like, I really believe like that the solution, the healing is inside of each of us. And it takes us honing in, checking in with our higher self and then stepping forward um, in faith. And I don't say that lightly. It's not in faith. Like, Oh, I passive faith. Like, Oh, I, I hope everything's going to be okay. No, it convicted faith. Mm -hmm. When you know that you're being called to do something, then with conviction, you move forward. Mm. Right. And then that's really where the shining happens. And exactly what you're saying, it invites other people to shine. Marianne Williamson talks about that in her, um, a return to love. Right. Um, you know, the, the, and I'm paraphrasing here, but she talks about how what we're most afraid of is our own light, right? Mm. But when we embrace our light, then we invite other people to embrace theirs. Yes, yes, yes. And I was thinking the same thing as you're saying that, that everybody has a different thing. It, mm. You're not supposed to look like the next person for a reason. Like we don't look like them. Every, every single part of our, ourself is, is different than the next person. So right. there's a reason. You know, and, and just because someone is walking in their gifting and calling and doing amazing at that doesn't mean that we're supposed to be the same, look the same way and do that. Like w- the more that we just hone into who we are, our authentic self and, and walk in that and shine that, that light, then, um, you know, the world needs that gift, whatever it is, whether you sing or dance or are good at uh, administration or are in type of some type of healing like Adelina and, and myself and um, whatever it is, uh, we, we need you. Everybody needs each other. <laughs> yes. Now more than ever. Yeah. So Adelina, how has COVID-19 affected your life particularly? Oh, uh, well, you know this because I had to uh, delay our, our meeting by a few minutes. Um, you know, I have a seven month old daughter. And um, so with COVID-19 being sheltered in place, I, um, my, I have a nanny and I also have my mother-in-law who comes and I'm so grateful for the both of them. And they come to help with daycare, you know, while I'm working and um, my husband is away for work. But right now he's home at work, I'm here and no one else is allowed in here. <laughs> so um, it's taken a lot more um, coordination, communication, um, between my husband and I've also had to really reevaluate my like how I'm serving right because I can get really into and I'm, I don't know if you're like this too but I can get really into the administrative details mm-hmm. right I'm like oh god I gotta get this done I gotta get this done da, da, da. and right now none of that matters like I have a ton of email <laughs> and none of that matters because what matters most is that I am serving and really serving the calling that I'm receiving right now in terms of how to serve. So I've been checking in and meditating a lot more, praying a lot more um, in terms of like, okay, God, universe, how would you have me serve now? What can I do to serve? And then of course, along with that um, is being there with my daughter. I want to make sure that she's getting quality time. Um, And so, you know, really looking at my calendar, looking at my schedule and um, just prioritizing what matters most. Mm. Yeah, I think that um, this pause for for some people, it's a pause. For some people, so other people, it seems like it's almost the opposite, <laughs> where it's like a lot more work. Especially if you're in feels like we're we're in, where it's just like, oh my gosh, how can I help people? You know, right, right. How can I serve? Uh, for sure. Yeah, and so um, 
I, that's what I feel like it is. So for a lot of people that do have that pause though, is that reprioritization of, of timing. And I guess, you know, mm-hmm. you're busy too. So it, even at that, um, but I, I feel like a lot of people are realizing more how much they enjoy spending more time with their family now that they don't have mm-hmm. as much work maybe, or, or that they're forced to stay home. Um, and, and even time with God. I mean, there's people have, people are sitting around and some people don't have anyone else to talk to. So it's just, it's them and God. And I think that's a beautiful thing that people can do is, is be able to have that time where, where they can check in and, and really hear from God more and, and how, how can we serve the world in a better way and, and be able to use our, our gift to, to bless people. Yes. Yes. Going inward um, and, and grounding in prayer. I was doing in the month of March, I was doing a prayer hour every day and it was a gift. People could join in and call in on um, and just grounding with folks in prayer you know and it was non-denominational prayer so people from all these different spiritual practices and religious backgrounds coming in together to just pray and it was it was so powerful yeah. so moving you know and my mind again i can systemize things like okay so natalina you're doing prayer hours every day da, 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 and i had to slow down and be like okay no that is what the universe and god called me to do for this moment let me pause once again. What is it you would call me to do now? Right. And that's mm-hmm. what we're going to the end. But like I have a new gift. Um, and, and the process is, is really just making sure that I'm in alignment so that the gift that I offer is in alignment for those that are receiving it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I believe that we all pray each other in. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I prayed you in, you prayed me in. Even for this podcast, we prayed each other in. Mm-hmm. What, what a blessing. You know, yeah. that's in um, a synchronicity and in, in, in alignment. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Pray each other. in. even if we don't realize it's, it's there, it's in the back of our head. It, it's like, uh, God, God is praying us in. <laughs> He's praying for us when we don't even know we're praying. <laughs> and, um, I am glad that you were able to, to come on and, and spread your expertise in this. So how is this affecting your clients? Oh, and so, you know, my clients, I think just like, those listening in or watching in, um, you know, come from all different walks of life and COVID-19 has no boundaries, you know? And so I have received, um, I mean, thankfully I haven't had any, um, clients who have passed from COVID-19. Um, but I have had clients whose loved ones have passed away through, um, through the coronavirus. Uh, I've had loved ones, I mean, clients who are, all, are also my loved ones, but clients whose loved ones um, are, are needing to self-quarantine, you know, um, through having COVID-19 and maybe they didn't, you know, thankfully they've healed through it, but having to um, do that. I've also had clients who, I mean, it, there's so many layers to this, right? So like for me, it's daycare. For other clients, it's, it's they themselves are, Um, pregnant I've had folks giving birth during this time Um, and that also means that they don't have somebody in the hospital with them Mm. outside of the pushing right when you deliver baby you're allowed to have someone with you to hold your hand and then they have to leave because of um, the restrictions on hospitals right now I've had I have clients who you know are healthcare providers themselves or teachers um, who are parents I mean it's just so many layers to that or who have love parents who are essential workers or they themselves are essential workers. Um, so it's definitely impacted them, um, you know, impa- impacted their stress levels. Um, and so I'm grateful to, you know, that they are in the work with me so that I can support them through those moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's dealing with a different degree of, of stress and how, and what, you know, where they're in their life, whether they're in the medical profession, they're a cop. I mean, I've been talking to my clients too. And just, just, I'm just out of curiosity, like how are our different fields being affected? So I've talked to nurses, uh, clients that are nurses. I've talked to a, a, an old friend that was a medical doctor, or that is one, I should say, and uh, a client that is a cop and just getting their perspective. And, and I, you know, I really feel for, for everyone, but especially those medical workers, because I mean, they're, they, they definitely sound like they are under the ringer with the stress that they're dealing with. And mm-hmm. it just, um, it breaks my heart. And of, of course, it's very stressful to have this type of illness as well. 
Um, and um, I just, I just wish I could just hug each one of them, you know? <laughs> mm. um, yeah. And you know, what has been really beautiful though, is I've seen, and I think I, I want to say this because I don't think the media is stressing this enough, but I've seen it in, you know, my community and, you know, just also like in the communities of the people that I serve. So like on, on that level, um, all the ways people are coming together mm-hmm. to spread love, all the ways that people are showing up for each other, provide, you know, um, even something as simple as like my neighbor is, you know, offering like, cause they know we, we have a little baby. So it's like, Hey, do you need it? We're at the grocery store. Do you need anything? You know, Aww. that you don't have to go out. Right. People offering to like drive um, and drop mm-hmm. off food to elderly, you know, that's been coming up in the communities. People are like just really showing up for each other, right? Collecting masks, giving that them to healthcare providers, making masks, you know, like so many ways that people are just showing up to spread love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My last podcast I just recorded, actually, the biggest thing that she, she just kept saying at the end was just show kindness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's exactly what you're we're you know what you're talking about is is showing that kindness and um the fact that people are just naturally doing that that's what i'm talking about when that when i see that light shining from people Mm -hmm. it's the little things that we don't even think about sometimes that you know um sending an encouraging word i mean you never know how that one encouraging thing that you feel led to tell someone is going to change your whole day and put a smile Mm -hmm. on their face and change the the way they're feeling you know giving um a nurse a mask like I, I have a client that is make, making mask actually she sews yeah. and she's very creative and she sews and she's been giving away masks for nurses and so there's so many ways that we can we can use our gift to bless the world and and like I said even even what we feel is a little thing and we're, we're using something that we've been downloaded from God to do you know <laughs> then it it's, it's empowering it's 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 really like this is what the world needs and I hope that um, as this season hopefully end soon <laughs> is, is what I'm really h- hanging on to. Um, but, you know, I just hope that we can carry on what we're getting from this in that, um, in, in that p- particular, I'm sure there's so many other learning lessons, but the fact that like, we're, we're serving each other, we're loving on each other, we're showing kindness. Mm-hmm. Um, if we can continue to carry it on to other seasons, can you imagine how much better the world would be? Yeah. Yes, totally. I think we don't even, we don't know the effects that, you know, not just the illness itself, but the psychological effects of COVID-19 and the shelter in place will have. And I think that there will, there will be some, you know, um, traumatic effects to it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, I, like you said, really am holding on to that. There will also be some drastic shifts um, where we are caring for each other in a different way because we're showing up for each other right now. And I just can't imagine that we'd be like, Oh, and about that, never mind, you know, like, right. <laughs> you know, like we, we can continue to care for each other, show up for each other, love on each other, support one another. And like you said, like even the small things and I, I almost want to quote small things because in the eyes of God and the universe, there is no such thing as big or small, right? It's a, it's an act of love and you know, what a gift, what a gift. Yes. Act of love. You're right. You're right. We, we might think it's small, but it really, it's, it's not an act of love is, I mean, that's like the, the highest use of, what did you call it? That, that, that thing I used to always vibration. No, was it vibration? Frequency. Was free, frequency. You're always like, I was always like, Adelina, how do I operate at a higher frequency? <laughs> do you remember me always asking you that? Yeah. Well, you're doing it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it, it really is love. Like that higher frequency is coming from a place of love, right? Would you say that? I don't know. I mean, you're the one that always yeah. tells me about this higher frequency. No, no. I mean, I, I mean, you're your highest authority. So if that's what it feels like for you, but I agree, you know, love is a synonym to me for God, right? Mm-hmm. It's a synonym for your higher self, you know? So it's like love. I mean, everything, um, A Course in Miracles says everything is either an act of love or a call for love, regardless of how unskillful it may seem right? But the more skilled we get in it, the the more people can receive the love. But everything is an act of love or a call for love, Mm -hmm. you know? But but when we become aware, oh gosh, when so-and-so said that to me, that was a call for love. They they didn't say it to me in a skillful way, but that was a call for love. 
when so and so did this. That was an act. When I did that, that was an act of love. May not have been the highest skill level of that act. Mm. And then when you can notice that, then you can up level your skills as with anything, right? Writing is a skill, reading is a skill. Guess what? Being able to translate, hey, this is an act of love, this is a call for love, is a skill. Hmm, I never really thought about it that way, but that makes a lot of sense. Um, especially if we're, we're talking about wounds, right? And people being traumatized from this situation. Uh, there's all kinds of trauma that people experience throughout their life. And mm-hmm. so, you know, when they're, we're carrying these traumas and we're not, we're not really fully healing from them, you know, whatever they are, whether they're physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, financial, I mean, um, they can really affect how we're ex- trying to express our love or our need for it. I mean, we need to be feel loved as well. And so it goes both ways. And the more that we feel love, the more that we can be able to express it better. And I think being able to, to um, heal and recover from those traumas can allow people to, um, to spread that love even more, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And that's when you come back to your higher self because your higher self in your higher self, I just, I, I use synonyms, right? God, um, universe, higher self. God is loving on us in the ultimate way. We don't have to like question that. We don't have to be like, Ooh, that was an unskillful way for you to love on me. Right? So when we receive God's love, then we can, we can have that be a reflection of, Oh, am I giving love in the way that God is calling me to give? Mm. You know? mm-hmm. um, because that's really where the skill is. We don't have to like, it's not like writing where you're like writing a over and over, and over. you know, when you're in grade school and you're, although now they type, so I don't even know how much they work on printing, but <laughs> right, back in the day, it'd be like, a a a right? Um, now the work is really about getting skillful at surrendering and mm. inviting God in and letting God use us. Mm. Letting your higher self use you, guide you, because that's really where love is is shown, is displayed, is is received, is mm-hmm. given, all of that. Yeah. On that note, how do you stay grounded so you can receive those messages? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so um, I would love to a couple of practices, I think, because I think so. It's one of those things that I could talk about it, but it's different to talk about it than to actually do it. Mm-hmm. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. So the first is gratitude. Gratitude is on the same frequency. You would love that, that word. Um, <laughs> gratitude is on the same frequency as abundance, right? And abundance is an act of God, right? abundance of love, abundance of joy, abundance of everything. That's in, that's in alignment with the universe. God is always trying to give us. We just, we block it sometimes. So when we get into a, a frequency of gratitude, then we open ourselves up to be able to receive the blessings that are already here, the blessings that the universe and God is trying to send our way that we're blocking. Okay. So you want to get into gratitude. And, and one practice that I love to do is from Brother Ishmael from South Africa. He does a full rounded gratitude. So I've adapted what he um, talks about. And so it's a gratitude to, for, and because, and because it makes me feel. So you, it's easy to say, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be alive. And you might really feel that. And that's, that, that's awesome, right? But you could take that same gratitude and expand on it. I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to my higher power for waking me up this morning, which is me still being alive right? Because it makes me feel happy. Because it makes me feel excited about life, right? And then you could bring it down to even more simple gratitude. You could say like, I'm grateful to my partner for cooking me dinner, right? And you might really feel that. You could expand on that in full round of gratitude. I'm grateful to my husband for cooking me dinner because it makes me feel loved. Mm. You see? So when you just give that extra And I think right now we could all use a little extra. (laughs) (laughs) Two more seconds to think, okay, well, who am I grateful to for that? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, and for what, and how does that make you feel? Mm -hmm. Warm because, so if, if you don't mind me putting you on the spot, Dr. Jacqueline, what would, what's the gratitude for you that's coming to mind? 
Oh my gosh. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to be grateful for, but um, I will, I'll say I'm grateful for, let's see, two, I'm grateful for my husband and let's see, am I doing, how do I do this? <laughs> Walk me through this. Are you grateful to someone for your husband or are you grateful to your husband for something? Because it makes you feel. Um, well, I'll say I'm grateful for to you that you helped open the door uh, with me just believing I could I could have that in my life to you know the, the fact that I can I can have marriage and I mean I know it sounds silly probably for some people but I was I couldn't understand why it wasn't happening for me <laughs> but to be honest I was like why is this happening for everyone else but not me this is not fair so you know I'm grateful that that's a very true thing for myself I'm grateful for to Adelina because she allowed me to see that vision and, and be one with it. And, you know, now that I can have my, I have a husband now. <laughs> yeah. I, well, and I'm so excited for you on that, by the way. I'm still excited. I know it's been a couple of years, but I'm always, every time I see you post, but I'm like, ah, she's so happily married. And would it be okay with you if I coach you through this gratitude? Yeah, yeah. Be supportive for those listening in, right? So what you said, all of that, yes. And we want to, we want to almost like bullet point it just so we, everything you said, it brought up like a, it's like a story. So it brought up all these other emotions and we just want to feel into the gratitude part of it. Mm. Right. Okay. So, you know, I'm grateful. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to switch it a little bit just because my own stuff is coming up about it being a gratitude to me, even though I super appreciate it and I'm totally taking it in. But I, I, so I'm grateful to, um, well, I could say God, but okay. you can say God, but I was, I was trying to think of your husband's name. Oh, Paul. Paul, thank you. I was like, what is his name? I know his name. Okay. I'm grateful, um, to God for Paul as my husband. Mm, okay. I'm for grateful giving to me God. Paul for, to be my husband. I'm grateful <laughs> to God. For Paul to be my husband. For Paul, for giving me Paul. For, okay, for giving me, I'm writing this down. <laughs> for giving me Paul to be, I know he's No, I wouldn't even say to be. <laughs> for giving me Paul. Right? For giving me Paul, okay. I'm grateful to God for giving me Paul because it makes me feel. Oh, uh, because it, because it makes me feel loved. Yes. Beautiful. And see, here's this one gratitude and we can expand on this. It could be like 10 gratitudes in one, right? I'm grateful to Paul for what? For, uh, I, let's see, how would I say this? I mean, he um, encourages me. Okay. I'm grateful to he, Paul for his encouragement. His encouragement. <laughs> and, um, oh, because... Wait, what am I on for? Because I'm great. <laughs> Sorry. I'm grateful to Paul for his encouragement because it makes me feel. Because it makes me feel like I can continue doing this business. Yes. When I, when I don't feel like I can sometimes. <laughs> so what? So we want to go into a feeling, right? Because okay. when you we know it's a feeling or a thought if you could switch it, right? So because. Mm -hmm. Because it makes me feel like I could do this business. That's actually a thought because it makes me think I could do this business, mm -hmm. right? You wouldn't be right, um, but I, from what you're saying, it might be supported because it makes you feel supported. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because right. it makes you feel supported, right? So you see yeah. that difference? It's just those little things. But this one gratitude that you started with could expand into a dozen. Right? Because mm -hmm. I heard you wanting to continue. I'm grateful to Paul for this and this and those would all be separate gratitudes. Mm -hmm. And so how do you feel having just said that? You know, it's interesting because like I could feel my emotions coming up, like the, mm -hmm. the overwhelming gratitude. Like I almost like I get sensitive, you know, I get almost cry, you know. <laughs> yeah. I really am. You know, I'm grateful for you, I'm grateful for God. I can't believe I have this in my life, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. And this, that energy that you're just talking about, and I could see it on your face too, and, and you feel it in your energy, um, that 
that is the energy we want to be into in and that's going to bring us a sense of calm right and then from this place this is also going to bring us a sense of direction from this place now you can ask okay god what is it you'd have me do now right from this place of gratitude and joy not from stress not from fear it's okay to feel fear and stress and you don't want to move from that place you don't want to try to be productive from a place of stress because what you produce is going to be of a much lower quality. Gosh, Adelina, you're making me cry on my own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me wipe my tears. <laughs> this is where I get my love for the world. Okay, you guys. <laughs> no, but I mean, but what, a, what, how amazing to just think like how grateful you are for your husband. <laughs> right? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for letting me go through that with you i know we yeah yeah no I, seriously though i mean this is real genuine tears i have right now like really <laughs> super grateful <laughs> <sighs> okay. all right are you ready for another practice oh my gosh i don't know if i could cry anymore <laughs> what if we did one that was related to uh something that someone else might be going through Sure. Yeah. Well, practice. I mean, not another gratitude, but another practice. I'm going to move the... There oh, the I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's okay. talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So another practice that you could do when you've noticed that your mind is just like, what is that called? Like in a rabbit hole, you know, I'm thinking of like, um, yeah, just like a, what's that called? Alice in Wonderland. You know what I mean? Where you're just like, going, 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 you're in a whole nother world. You're not even in reality anymore. And your mind is just wandering and stress, especially right now with all of the things that are being broadcasted on the media with COVID-19. Um, and then, you know, there's other stuff that's going on as an effect of that hate crimes that are happening as an effect of that. Right. So when your mind and, and then your mind going to like, what can I do? And then this feeling of like helplessness because you're stuck at home and you can do it. You know, there's so many things of, feelings that can come up that don't feel good and that you could and it could really stretch you out just by thinking about it mm -hmm. right yeah. um so when you notice that your mind is no longer thinking about this moment and you're thinking and you're worrying and fearing and um frustrated and angry this is a practice that you can do to bring you back okay this is a practice that i learned from um a Korean activist named Ayo Sun Woo, and I also learned this from a uh, Kurandera, I, and I apologize because I cannot recall her name, um, but it's, you know, just the idea of bringing your spirit back into your body, and um, I've taken the practices that they taught me and have kind of, again, just formatted it to, to work with me, and I share that because you could always change it to work with you. You know, these are practices, same with gratitude practice. These are practices that I've adopted and made my own and added little twists to. Um, and I invite everyone to do that. You know, you want to see what works for you. Um, but so what you do is you, you think about, okay, sometimes we leave our spirit. When I say that you, your mind is everywhere, you leave your spirit in the car. Maybe you went grocery shopping and part of you left it there. You left part of your spirit in the grocery shop, um, in the grocery store. You left part of your spirit at work. Maybe you're worrying about loved ones. So you, you let your leaving spirit, your spirit there. Thoughts are real things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you are in all these different places, then your spirit is not at its in your body completely. Mm -hmm. And so you want to pull your spirit back from everywhere you may have left it so that you are at your highest potential, right? Because you're embodied. Um, that does two things. One, it raises your immune system mm -hmm. because your whole body is in, your whole spirit is inside of you. So your immune system is at its best. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the second thing it does is it clears the fog out of the way for all of your confusion. And I'm quoting confusion because confusion is not real. And I know that's a really strong statement to say, but confusion is not real. Confusion is your ego putting fear in front of you and giving you fog. You actually know the answer to every question that you have because you're connected to the divine and the divine knows everything. Mm. Right? Mm. So when you call your spirit back, you get clarity 
and you boost your immune system. So why not call your spirit back, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> how you do that is you want to you want to say your whole name. So you say I am, and then your entire name, and I am here. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna walk everyone through that. I just a quick meditation on it, just a few deep breaths, and then we're gonna go into that. Okay. Okay. I invite you to go ahead and close your eyes. Have your palms face down on top of your knees. And we'll start by taking three deep conscious breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. So take a deep breath in and out and in and out. And one more in and out. I will demo and then I invite you, Jacqueline, to do it afterwards and then we'll hold space for those listening to do it um, themselves as well. I am Adelina Nicole Tonshoko and I am here. All right, I am Jacqueline pa Gutierrez and I am here. Holding space for those listening. I am, and then your entire name, and I am here. Feeling that warmth, grounding you in this knowing, feeling your spirit coming into your body from all the places you may have left it. Inviting in a gentle smile. <sighs> and opening your eyes and you're ready. that does feel good uh, and when you say we left our spirit in random places you're talking about like kind of like our thoughts right you said you mentioned thoughts um can you expand on exactly what that means a little bit more sure i believe that thoughts are real things right and there is some science supporting that as well um but i don't get into all the details of that but just our thoughts are real things Right. And that's why when somebody walks into the room, right? But I'm gonna give you an example. How do you know that that's a real thing? With that, let's say you're talking to let's say you're you you're looking at somebody. You meet somebody on the street, um, back in the day before shelter in place. <laughs> you meet somebody on the street. Right now it's out the window to the next window. <laughs> you can actually see on their face. In, in their body language, right? Say you're at the grocery store, right? And, and you are, you know, you see the, the cashier. Mm -hmm. You could tell if they're having expansive thoughts or contractive thoughts mm -hmm. simply from their body language. Wow. You know? And then, if, and then another layer of that is say you have your back towards the door, but your door is open and somebody walks in, they make absolutely no noise but you could feel their presence, mm. right? Mm -hmm. You can feel their presence because we have that sense. So in that same way, just combining those two things, our thoughts are, are real things and our energy is real, whether we are aware of it or not. So when I say we leave our spirit in different places, I actually mean like physically um, because we leave our thoughts in different places. And therefore when our thoughts are in different places, so is our spirit. I seriously we want to just bring it all back into our into our physical body mm -hmm. right? okay okay that was a great explanation of that was it okay <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. no no i mean i don't know for me it helped kind of get more of a visual of like what that what that could mean so mm -hmm. yeah and basically just anytime you're stressed out and you're like what's it called? it's called stacking when you're like god i gotta do this and i have to do this and i have to do this i have to do this you're not in this moment Mm -hmm. yeah. A mentor of mine, um, Reverend Eloise Oliver, she is a, um, an elder in the Oakland community for, especially for the African American community there. And something that she told me was that if you're not feeling joy, mm -hmm. if you're not feeling an immense joy and gratitude and love in this moment, um, then you're not in this moment. <laughs> like, whoa. It, if you're not feeling joy, it's because you're worried about the past or you're freaking out about the future. 
Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Not in this moment. That needs to be like a, a quote that <laughs> someone puts on social media. <laughs> right? right? But I mean, I, and it, it's hard because a part of me is like, well, what if in that moment you're getting beaten? Or what if in that moment you're getting, you know? But then, yeah. it, but to be able to like know, like when you really are in this moment, so I mean, um, Victor Frankl talked about this in A Man's Search for Meaning. I think I might be misquoting his book, but he was a Holocaust survivor. And he talked about even in the midst of the hardest moments of, of torture, what he found is that, and it wasn't just him, but it was a lot of the other survivors in there, um, or not all of them survived, um, were able to find a sense of peace right? Because we have within us the opportunity to choose into life itself, which is our higher being itself. Mm. And so like, even amidst all of this, we can choose peace. And so the first step of that is just calling ourselves back to where we are. We are in this moment, I am breathing. Mm. In this moment, I have a roof over my head. Right? I have food on my table in this moment. I might be worried about continuing to have roof on my head or continuing to be able to put food or, um, on the table. Sure, that is not this moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. It's so easy to get lost in what could happen or what might have happened. And, and then we forget the blessing that's right now. Um, mm-hmm. One of my pastors said the gift is in the present. <laughs> yes. And it is. It's it's realizing that we are blessed even just being able to do this podcast right now and be able to sp- spread this light like i feel blessed you know but the yeah. fact that we're safe in our homes the fact that you know i we have a the sun is starting to shine outside um you know that we have we have a home like you said we have food to eat i mean i know everyone's in a little bit different place but i think there's usually still something to find gratitude in no matter what situation we've been, been in and uh, I don't know about you, but I mean, I've been in really highs and lows in my life where I've had a lot of things and I haven't had a lot of things. <laughs> and sometimes when I haven't had a lot of things, it was almost like I had more peace because I was re- starting to really walk in line with who I, I was more and, mm-hmm. um, and and really also learning who God was and who who he was in my life um, gave me so much, so much peace in that. So, right. Yes. Yes. So it's not always about things is what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's <laughs> like how you mentioned the Holocaust. That's, I can't even, as you say that, I'm just like, although it feels like we're in a Holocaust, that's a whole different story in itself, but uh, in its own way. But um, aside from that though, like, I mean, I can't even imagine what they were going through and how people were still able to find peace in that. that that's, right. that's beautiful that you're, you're mentioning that. Mm, no, I mean, I think it just comes to show that every, there's no place where God is not, right? There is no place. There, this, amidst this chaos of COVID-19, the universe and God, our higher self, is still here. So we can lean into that knowing. And what Victor Frankl talked about was, he was talking about, and there's a specific scene that I remember from his book where he said, um, he, had, he was a doctor. And he had his life's work, he had, this is back in the day, obviously. So he had written his life's work, like handwritten it on a manuscript. And he hid it underneath his bed. Um, and so when the tribunal came to search everything, they found it. So they took him in front of like the high ranking officers, stripped him naked. And mind you, this is also after he had already lost his wife. They had like parted ways. They had split according to gender and he was never to see her again. And she ended up um, going into the gas chambers, which, what, which he learned later. Um, so anyway, he is having lost his wife, not knowing what happened to her. Um, his life's work is now in the hands of these high ranking officers. He's stripped naked in front of them. They burn his life's work in front of him. They burn it. And then they notice that he has a very thin um, gold wedding band around his finger. So the officer, you know, requires him to give that to him. And so as he's taking off this wedding band, and it's the last evidence of his life before becoming a number, right? Mm. Um, So much of him wanted to hate this officer, one day, all of them. 
but he decided in that moment that they can't they could force me to get naked they could they could burn my life's work they could force me to give them my wedding ring but they cannot take from me my ability to choose how i feel in this moment mm. they cannot force me to hate them wow and it was i mean it's super powerful that from that he created a whole therapy around it um but this idea that we have the opportunity to choose we have the opportunity to choose in mm. uh, and so we can choose even amidst this moment of chaos this moment of COVID-19 having lost loved ones having um being ill ourselves or being sheltered in place and all the different things that are coming with this and yet we can still choose peace mm. right. mm -hmm. yeah so Adelina you have one more tool for us right I do. I know. We're like, I can go on forever. I'm so sorry. I can go on forever too. And I'm just like, oh yeah, we do have one more thing that she wants to tell us. And I'm just dying to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I saved this on for last because I think it, for me and in the work that I do specifically, um, specializing in serving women of color, um, I find it to be the, one of the strongest tools that we can, that I invite people to utilize, which is, um, really coming down into your, your timeline, your ancestry line. Um, I did a workshop with Dr. Jeannie Celestial and we called it heritage of resilience. And so this last tool is really checking in and grounding in your own heritage of resilience. And how do you do that? You draw upon your ancestors. Thinking about your, think of one ancestor and you could do this for, several but think about one ancestor what they overcame mm. right many of us you know unless you're native american we're all immigrants to this land right so think about an ancestor who came here a brand new land for them brand new world for them leaving everything that they knew behind you know and for some of us that's more recent than others you know um Folks having experienced different traumas in their life, having experienced domestic violence, having experienced child abuse, having experienced sexual assault, right? These can feel like shadows in our history, but actually this is a heritage of resilience because they overcame that, mm. which is evidenced by your being here. We are a product. We're alive because they overcame it and we're able to be here now. So if we know, think of the story of an ancestor, embrace that story, and then know that that same strength, their strength, their resilience, their courage is within you right now. Mm. So if they could overcome, I'm thinking about my, my grandma, my Lola, she overcame World War II, right? And all of our ancestors did, otherwise we wouldn't be alive, right? Mm -hmm. So she overcame World War II in the Philippines, where they had to, I guess, in a sense, be sheltered in place because they had to hide. And she, they would come out, she would come out and she would hide behind a carabao, which is a water buffalo. And that's how she would sneak around to, pick, to get food. And then they would go back and bring that home. If she could overcome that, I could overcome being sheltered in place without daycare. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? It kind of just gives perspective. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's that's a, it's beautiful that you got to know your um, your grandma. I, I didn't really get to have my grandparents in my life too much, so mine kind of stops more so with my parents. <laughs> right, but uh, even stories, even stories of your grandparents, if you if you know any, right? And knowing that, like like for you, um, I know that you're half Filipino. When did your family come over? Do you know? Um, my dad, my dad was actually from the Philippines. And then he, when he was nine, he was adopted by his, um, his aunt in Hawaii. So he came when he was nine with my aunt. Oh yeah. With his sister, my aunt. Okay. So your dad came at nine years old to a brand new country. To foreign land. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they were starving over there. I mean, they, there was a reason why my grandma had to give him up, you know, him and my, my aunt up. So, you know, they're apparently the, I think my, 
my great grandpa, I want to say, and I didn't learn this stuff until later in my life. I mean, we were very far removed from my, my grandparents. Mm. I didn't even really know my grandma until my real grandma, my, uh, I, the other one we called our grandma and um, she's our great aunt, but right. um, my dad's like real mom. Um, we didn't even know her until I, I was older. And, and then I got to meet her before she passed, which was a blessing because it made me realize like, oh, she's a lot like me. She's very into health. She loves God. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is why I'm probably right. like this. <laughs> but how awesome, right? Even without knowing her, you have a lot of attributes that are still, you know, like her. Yeah. Right? And, and, and so in that sense, now that you're saying it, now I can kind of understand why you would say like, why, why we talk about what, what kind of strength do they have? Because I mean, we have their blood, we have their DNA. I exactly. mean, um, and, and just knowing how she, you know, she didn't have an easy life. I mean, she yeah. had nine children and she was in the Philippines, two different fathers and my dad's father. Uh, we don't know. We, we, I never met him. I have no idea um, who he is. I, I have like a very slight idea, but that's it. And he, I think he passed. Um, and um, so, I mean, it wasn't easy for her. She had to give her two children. Um, yeah. So I guess I do know my, my, my grandma a little bit. <laughs> right, but, but that's exactly my point, though, is that even if you didn't know you you didn't know her, and yet you had these characteristics from her, just like you were saying, then even without knowing our ancestors, we have their strength. Yeah, there we is something that powerful, like scientifically. I, I I believe what you're saying because, I mean, our we're we're replicants of their our DNA. Just kind of you know we're we have our mom's DNA which is our grandparents' DNA, which, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so even emotional things can be passed down. In that 100%. And I believe that our ancestors are here watching over us, sending us those loving on us, watching us as angels, you know? Um, and so like, yes, it's in our DNA and they're here. <laughs> Cheering us on, they're that little voice to be like, you could do it, you know, or go here. Or, you know, this is those little things where it's like, God, I, I, um, you know, I, I almost made a right turn over there and I ended up turning left and then later learned that there was an accident when mm. I went, you know what I mean? Those mm. like little moments where it's like, mm, who told me that? I feel like in my belief system, that's our ancestors watching out for us. Mm. And so we have them in our blood. Yes. And around us, um, as reminders of our own courage, our own strength that they have also given us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for some of you, I'm sure that you're probably thinking like, well, that person wasn't very nice or, <laughs> you know, but I'm sure there's still something that we can find, you know, it's that, I think it goes back to that gratitude of there's, there's something that they went through and maybe they might not have expressed their love like you were talking about in the best way, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but they still had strength to be able to, to make it through it. So I'm sure no matter what situation we have with our parents or grandparents, there's still some blessing to find and some lesson to learn in what they went through as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then just right now is the time to really embody, like you said, there's hardships and then there's also rough moments where maybe it's not the best memory of them, but then remembering like, in addition to that, they were able to overcome X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. now, I, now I can overcome this right because mm -hmm. yeah. we even laughed we even laughed right when I was like well if she could overcome having to go outside and hide behind a water buffalo to get food and like I can overcome having no daycare <laughs> you know <laughs> it's crazy to think of what some like even just in this day what people go through I mean yeah. uh this quarantine doesn't seem like anything compared to what people go through in Africa I mean I went over there a couple of years ago and I was just like I, I can't believe people live like this I mean, mm. what, and even this situation living in China, I mean, we don't, we're not told the whole story, I don't believe. And so I can't even imagine what those people are going through over there and the, the government, all that. Like, I, I just feel for, for people that are in a similar situation, but it's like magnified because of just where they're placed in the world. I, I mean, I, I feel for them. I mean, even just drawing on that strength <laughs> and just knowing yeah. maybe it's really not as bad as we think. Mm. We're, the yeah. government's giving people money. Uh, how many governments in the world are doing that? Uh, I mean, uh, this yeah, is not I mean, there's so many layers because even here in the U S there are people who are going unsheltered, who are going, yeah. you know, supported. And so just knowing like, and again, that's where it comes down to what I had talked about earlier is like, well, what is it that we are individually being called to do right now to serve? Mm. Right. Whether that's making masks, whether that's signing a petition, whether that's, you know, 
whatever you are being called, we are each being called to, to serve in this moment um, to heal the world. And I don't say that lightly. I, I don't yeah. use the world, but it really yeah, is yeah. the world right now. <laughs> well, yeah, if everyone played their part, then, I mean, can you just imagine how how everything would is just better when, when, when we do those things that we, we might not think it's a big deal, but in the grand scheme of things, it is. I mean, it, if you think of even how the body is so intricately designed, I mean, God knew what he was doing. There's, there, at a microscopic level, you have cells, you have mitochondria, you have, you know, the, all these atoms. And I mean, that's way beyond even my expertise. <laughs> no, exactly. How it all intertwines together. But if you start taking out pieces of it, your body's not going to function right. If your mitochondria is shut down, the smallest part of your body, you know, one of the smaller parts of your body, if that's shut down, we can't even see this thing. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not going to work. So can you imagine though, like even when I, I detox, I work with detoxing people and we start to support the mitochondria, one of these little pieces in the body. And it makes a huge difference on whether people can cleanse their body. Mm. Wow. So, yeah. And when I think you know, the body, like you said, it's a, it's a microcosm for the world. That's yeah. exactly what I'm thinking, you know, yeah. that, that, that small gesture, what we think is a small gesture, uh, how it has a ripple effect. You know, you made someone's day by giving an encouraging note and now they're, they're feeling so full of love and now they're doing it to the next person and the next person, yeah. you know, and it just has this butterfly effect. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful to watch and to be able to witness, you know, and then it's also, it feels so good when we step beyond our own fears, like I talked about earlier, being hella scared, right? Stepping beyond that. <laughs> Because it's not about us, uh -huh. it is, but it's not, right? Yes, yes. Um, you know, Rumi says, paraphrasing here, but you know, it's as if we're all sent here by a king to do one thing, mm -hmm. and if we accomplish all these other things, but we don't accomplish the one thing that we were sent on earth to do, it's as though we did nothing. Wow, mm -hmm. we're each sent here for a reason. And I believe that we're each here right now alive during COVID-19 for a reason. This is a time, this is going to go down in history books if it hasn't already, right? What were you doing when shelter in place came? What were you doing when um, they called it a pandemic, right? What was happening, you know? And then what did you do? What did you do from that? Well, how did you serve? What, what, and not just serving other people, but also serving yourself. Maybe you decided to up-level your own immune system, right? Yeah. You know, maybe you decided to sleep early. Maybe you decided, you know, to reach out to people you hadn't talked to in years. You know, this is a time, like, what are you being called to do? Um, and, and nothing is too small. Like, yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that about ourselves because some people, I feel like it might be a time to just focus on yourself. And yes. when the more that you build yourself up, the more that you can be a light to others as well. I mean, I, Adel, I've spent a lot of time. I, I know Adelina spent a lot of time. Like we have spent a lot of time reading these books and, you know, all those quotes that Adelina put, pulled out. I mean, I'm sure she's had a lot of time reading and studying and, you know, introspective work where that's not, that's not selfish. Um, sometimes I think people might think it is, but it really isn't. The more that, that we're filled up, the more that we could just naturally pour out. And it doesn't feel yeah. like it's like, we're like this big thing like this, or we have to try so hard. It just naturally oozes out. Like Adelina, I don't even think you prepared that, right? Like all these quotes and stuff, you're, it just was like, <laughs> oh yeah, there's that. And there's this, and there's this. And I'm like, I can't believe how you could quote people so well. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, well I appreciate that. I'm paraphrasing some of them, but I think it's important to uh, to continue, like you said, to like up level my work and my study on myself. You know, everything is a reflection. Um, I mean, right before our call, I did yoga, you know, with uh, Freedom Yoga Union City on, oh, virtually, because I think it's important for me to like, if I'm going to give, I need it to like receive. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I think to your point, we actually cannot, it's actually impossible to give what we don't have. Right. Yes. You know, we give once our whole cup is full and then we are, like you said, oozing over. That's how we give. Otherwise, it's not really giving. Usually it's projection. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not actually giving. Not giving anything that's going to serve. <laughs> you know. Yes. I'm glad that we... Um... We're wrapping it up on that note because I know when we talk about service and giving, it's like sometimes it feels so stressful. Mm -hmm. I've yes. been there because there's areas where I'm just like, 
it's, it's easy to overflow. Cause it's like, I keep receiving and I keep receiving and I'm like, okay, great. Here you go. Here you go. And then, and then there's these other areas where you're just like, I, I feel just so strapped, you know? And it's just like, okay, it's okay. Just breathe in that area. Let that cup be filled. And you know, God is going to get, God's going to bless you. And he's going to trust that you're going to bless other people at some point too. So I, I don't think that we, we need to feel so, so strapped, just do what, do what you can, you know, even if it's time for yourself. There's so many things being offered right now, you know, which actually brings me to my gift, if I may. Yes. Yes. Please tell them. Um, you know, I, I just know so much stress has been heightened right now. And so I, like I said earlier, I've been praying in God universe. How would you have me serve? And so at first it was daily prayers. And then I did a workshop for essential workers with Dr. Jean Celestial. And now I've been called to do much more individual work. And I, you know, just in my practice, I've actually moved away from individual work and I've been doing much more group work. But right now during the month of April, I am offering one-on-one. Um, and so my one-on-ones are valued at $500 and people have really paid me $500. I always like wanted to let people are like, what the hell? But yes, because a lot happens, a lot of transformation happens in one-on-one time, you know, when you're really getting grounded and supported during that time and um, the fog moved away so you could hear from your higher self, right? Um, so it's valued at $500. And for the month of April, I'm gifting them. It's, it's a free gift for people to just have an hour with, of just being loved on. If you're feeling stressed about COVID-19, if you're feeling stressed about being sheltered in place, if you're f- worried about your job, if you're worried about um, you know, a loved one, if you're grieving, whatever is going on for you, um, I have opened up my calendar. I have moved things to the side because this is what the universe and God is calling me to do. And so I'm serving in one-on-ones. I opened this up actually just yesterday and I already have eight people who have already signed up. And this was just like yesterday evening. And so I share that because I don't have like an infinite amount of time. (laughs) So my calendar is there. If this, if it feels like something that would serve you, I I really want to stress, take it. I think so often I find that people are like, well, somebody else can use some. No, this is for you. This is for you. If you feel called, if you feel resonant um, with receiving it, then, then know that it's meant for you. Um, yeah, I, I will mention too, like when I first started working with you, you offered me a free gift like this. And um, that's what really opened the door of us working together. And that really just changed my life. Um, and mm-hmm. I mean, I would have never imagined that would have turned into nine months of working with you. I had no idea. Um, so, but e- even if someone doesn't, I mean, the blessing that you can get from from that, I mean, I highly recommend it. So Adelina is highly intuitive i mean she she knows she just knows the words to say <laughs> you know i had no idea i was going to cry on my own podcast uh, you know speaking of which you know it's like she just she just knows she just knows how to twist the words and and like like really get to the root causes in in our soul and so um i you know i like i said i can't highly suggest you take advantage of that free gift yeah. And, and I love that for, for me and you, yes, we ended up working together. I also just want to stress that that doesn't have to be the case. Um, whatever that, that hour, whatever comes up and I will work with you, you know, I'm talking to the person who's listening right now and, and you know who you are. <laughs> um, I will work with you on what feels good for you. So whether that's a referral to somebody else, whether that's working with me or whether that's something all different altogether. You know, maybe it's you starting journaling, maybe it's you writing that book, whether it, maybe it's you um, just receiving in other ways. Maybe it's you walk, taking a walk at the park. I, I don't, it, I don't know, you know, and that's really what will come out of that session is, um, you know, feeling supported and then having a plan for how you're going to continue to live at your highest self, um, even during this shelter in place, even during this pandemic. Yeah. Awesome. So I will put a link in the show notes for that. And then where else can people find you? Sure. So um, my company is named Surrendered Healing. So you can find me on Instagram at Surrendered Healing, on Facebook at Surrendered Healing. Um, I also have a closed Facebook group, Surrendered Healing. Um, and then at my website, Surrendered Healing. <laughs> <I try to laughs> <pick it off. laughs> so it's all there, Surrendered <laughs> 
<laughs> makes it easy. All right. Well, thank you, Adelina, again, for coming on the show. And um, the other thing I want to leave with you guys, if you found this of value and you really want to learn more too, we did uh, do a podcast. It was one of the ones I launched uh, in the beginning. So you'll just kind of have to scroll through. <laughs> um, and um, she talked about how to move past your fears into a life you love. So if you're finding that that's something where you have these dreams and you're, you're fearful, then I would highly suggest you go watch that video as well or audio recording, depending on how you guys listen to this show. So thank you again, Adelina, for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacqueline, for having me. It's always an honor. All right. And thank you listeners for joining us. And we will continue to produce this content and give you hope. Have a blessed day. My super immunity boost juice guide is now available on the wellnesstrinity.com. You'll learn how to grow broccoli microgreens, the ingredients I put in my green juice, and super nutritious supplements you can add to enhance your immune system. Again, go to the wellnesstrinity.com and you'll receive your free super immunity boost juice guide. Thank you for listening to the Wellness Trinity Podcast. Be sure to subscribe for more wellness tips to help you achieve optimal health. Don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content. See you on the next episode.